The year is 2007, okay? And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, there's gotta be something more to offer in life. So I've decided to time travel. Today, I go to the year 2021. So, wish me luck and I can't wait to tell you about all the floating cars. Here we go. Ooh, oh man, time travel gets you a little stiff, but uh, here we are, 2021. This looks the same. Hey, who, who's that? Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Oh, oh hey, what's going on? Uh, yeah, hi, I'm, I'm from the year 2007, are you? Are you me? Yeah, I'm, I'm you, I guess. Yeah, that'd be right. I haven't done much of my life. And guess what? I have an underactive thyroid. <laughs> ah, yeah, okay, well, that's uh, encouraging. Anyway, uh, why are you still here? I mean, you know, there's gotta be total advancements in society, right? Food, medicine, all taken by one mere capsule. No worries whatsoever, right? Uh, yeah, well, we, um, we pretty much just stay inside all the time now. Oh, you're inside all the time because the games are so good. What games are coming out in 2021, man? I mean, right now, we're waiting for Mass Effect, this brand new IP coming from Bioware, and they just gave us KOTOR. It's amazing, man. So I can't wait to see what they do. What's coming out this year? Games. Okay. Now we're talking. Now you got my attention. Uh, Mass Effect is probably my most Mass anticipated Eff game of this what? year. What? Yeah. We're getting another Resident Evil game. <laughs> Wait, that's, that's still game. around? It's still around. It's crazy. Oh, oh, and there's Halo. Halo's coming out this year. Halo. No, I'm going back, bro. I'm going back. Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and today is the big day, finally. Mass Effect information, and there's plenty to go over. Today, we have what's called an info blowout. That means lots, and I mean lots of information in one video today, compiled from a ton of sources. I'll have them all linked in the description down below, but this video is about to be a fat one, and I cannot wait because we have a lot to sink our teeth into from a new trailer, release date, screenshots, details on the game, practically Mass Effect 1 being remade, so on and so forth, that I am out of breath. At this point in time this is so exciting y'all know how much i love mass effect we just made a video yesterday saying that hey something new's on the horizon and it may be this week turns out it was just the following day so we have a lot of previews to go over expect a lot more mass effect legendary edition content if you like rpgs and especially if you like mass effect i want to keep you around all right hit the subscribe button also it worked again like button helps a lot. Anyway, let's get this information blowout started. Mass Effect Legendary Edition is arriving May 14th. Why is it so far? What were they thinking? I mean, I get it. They gotta get the game out when it's ready. I'd rather it not be broken. Bioware's already kind of screwed up the Mass Effect franchise enough when we look at Andromeda. So I get it, but at the end of the day, I really was hoping that those February and at least March rumors would be true. I thought March was a guarantee, but it makes sense as we dive deeper into this video why it's taking a bit longer, but now I have to stave off this undying desire to play Mass Effect for multiple months, and it has to land in a month that is going to be incredibly busy for me, right? We've got Resident Evil, there's Biomutant, there's Deathloop, and guess what? Here's three of the best RPGs ever, all in one package, with a ton of new upgrades that you're gonna wanna play. <laughs> Being a gamer is so hard. Anyway, this announcement came coupled with a brand new trailer called the Mass Effect Legendary Edition Official Reveal Trailer. It is in 4K, YouTube's doing it dirty, so keep in mind that YouTube compresses a lot of its videos, so what you're seeing here is not gonna be really representative of what's on screen. That applies for pretty much any bit of gameplay you've ever seen in your entire life. But it looks sharp. I remember a quick little story here, laying in bed watching this, geeking out and thinking, huh, on my phone this doesn't look great. When I went to my computer, watched it in full 4K, big difference. So make sure you're watching on the proper screens because I gotta say, some of the updated textures, especially in Mass Effect 1, oh my God. I've been doing a lot of chef's kiss lately on the channel. It's because everything's just, there's just so much good stuff. It's great. I'm loving gaming right now. It's great. With that trailer and with a lot of the previews have come some great screenshots to show some of the upgrades, some good. One of them in particular, I and many other Mass Effect 1 fans are not pretty happy with. But 
let's focus on the good first i think the best change we're seeing is of course in mass effect one this is the game that is receiving the biggest overhaul of them all from systems to ui to controls to visuals it is the most dated so they've pretty much unearthed this game and really transformed it so much so that i think i can confidently say a lot of people are going to walk out of legendary edition maybe saying that mass effect one is their new favorite because a lot of things holding it back were the mechanics the gameplay the controls the camera oh my god don't get me started on that when you go to aim in you get like a shot of shepherd's right ear you're like oh okay a little further back than that so that type of stuff being fixed up with still that phenomenal story and great role playing mechanics oh my gosh people are in for a treat if this is your first time playing that series but anyway as you can see on screen here let's take a look at an original shot and this one versus what's happening here in the legendary edition night and day from textures to lighting you see some of the hud on the bottom left corner has been removed from the mass effect one such as the health bars for garris shepherd and rex i mean overall this looks way way better but there was a trade-off and that trade-off happened nowhere else other than eden prime the opening level for mass effect one one of the most memorable moments in the entire franchise itself and so as you can see on screen here a lot of the red hue the red sky the atmosphere that was built in the original is gone now in legendary edition this kind of happens when artists who did not work on maybe the original project are handed another bunch of tools and things to apply to this game here um, and they don't have that original vision intact or maybe they weren't a part of the discussion on why there is really a red sky at eden prime uh, I just felt that built the moment so much you knew just visually speaking artistically that something was wrong here and something was building up there was tension there was atmosphere but what's happening now is the community is clashing ever so slightly because when you go to the Mass Effect wiki the description of Eden Prime it's a lot more represented in the updated screenshots from Mass Effect Legendary Edition however you lose some of that mood and a lot of people have said lore wise you can't really explain the red sky but I feel like with the Reapers coming setting that presence setting that mood the atmosphere that's there and also it's some cataclysmic event happening here on Eden Prime I feel like we can just forego the lore ever so slightly for the Red Sky is it the end of the world no but I get the idea of lore impacting this and it technically being more accurate especially when we see it in Mass Effect 3 but it's still one of those things where usually I'm okay if you let it slide a little bit to make that scene or that mood better so I gotta say this is one of those moments here where I'm not happy with it but across the board when you look at some of the new character models when you look at the upgraded textures this game through and through from Mass Effect 1 to Mass Effect 3 looks really really good i really only have one complaint it is eden prime outside of that everything i've seen has looked fantastic so on a visual front mass effect legendary edition is looking good now maybe you're new here maybe you're just getting on the mass effect bandwagon we've been here for over a year now so allow me to welcome you once more what is coming with mass effect legendary edition you may be asking well i've compiled sources from Eurogamer, game informer GameSpot, I mean, all over the internet, all into this one video. So let's take a look first at Game Informer, who writes that the above trailer is exciting, but what does Legendary Edition come with? I'm glad you asked. Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 are, of course, bundled in here. Over 40 DLC, which we will be specifying which of those DLC are and are not inside this game. It's remastered for 4K, enhanced visuals concerning models, lighting, shaders, and special effects, as we've already seen. There's gameplay and quality of life improvements, which we will get into details on. And there's also all of these games available under a single launcher. So that's great for PC players. You're not going to get loaded up in your library with Mass Effect 1 Legendary Edition, 2 Legendary, 3 Legendary. It's just all under one Legendary Edition. Then you start up from assumingly that menu. So that's great news there, but let's get into the nitty gritty. What about those DLCs? So if you're familiar with pretty much all of the DLC content from the Mass Effect franchise, all of it is here from new storylines to new locations to explore, weapon packs, armor packs. They even brought the Blood Dragon armor back. For those who don't know, this was like a promotional Dragon Age Origins armor that is so dope like there's only one way to describe it man i remember dragon age origins just knocking me off my feet and then i went over to mass effect you find that armor there just, mm. so this dlc includes stuff like new companions like i said new storylines they even have mass effect 3 extended cut which pretty much confirms they're not going to be doing anything with the ending but what's missing bioware explains is the pinnacle station dlc which bioware says was 
heartbreaking. They said the team tried to contact everyone and anyone that had any connection to this DLC. When Bioware and EA contact Demiurge, who was originally responsible for this DLC, hope surged only to come crashing down once more when the backups for the code sent over contained almost all corrupted data, even vital links were missing. Walters added that in order for Pinnacle to see a revival, it would have had to been an entire remake from the ground up and entirely from scratch. It would basically take us another full six months to do just this with most of the team we've got, he told us. I wish we could do it honestly just because it meant to be everything that the team ever created brought together again, all the single player content. And so leaving it all on the cutting room floor, it was heartbreaking. So I totally get why this is the case. It sounds like a very out of their hands thing. And honestly, as much as I wanted everything there, I wouldn't have wanted to wait another, as they're reporting, half a year to get just one extra piece of content. I think we can all live without it. Um, and so this is not something that you're really gonna be drastically missing out on. A lot of the, all of the major DLC, all of the major storylines, all the really good ones are here. And that's important. So I understand this one omission, but still want to make sure people were aware of it. Gameplay changes are gonna be the main highlight here today though. We've got a lot to still go through. So this one comes from Eurogamer. Gameplay changes to Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3 sound relatively minimal, though there's a whole list of differences to remove friction, they call it, from Mass Effect 1. Aim Assist adds adhesion to keep you locked onto enemies, while a zoom snap will flick your focus onto a target while aiming. Each Mass Effect 1 gun has been balanced and given an individual feel to those found in later games. The Mako has been given a speed boost in updated physics, while the game's hidden loading screens and lifts have been dragged drastically cut down in length. Comparison footage of a ride up the Citadel's Presidium level lasts just 14 seconds in the Legendary Edition, down from 52 seconds in the original. A list of other Mass Effect 1 improvements mentions enemy and squad AI changes, the removal of class-based weapon restrictions, though only some allow for training to higher levels, and XP rebalance so you can hit the game's cap without New Game Plus more consistent auto save points, boss encounter improvements, reduced cooldown for first aid, a reduction in mini games, and a modernized HUD. The retooling of guns is huge, especially the rebalancing of XP. Like I said, when I went back and played it, some of these things felt very old. So I have to say, this makes me so happy. They're changing so many of the right things here. It's on a technical level. They're not changing actual content. And I get that idea of friction, right? Because I feel like two and three play very well, but one was very old feeling. So to update that and make it feel great, I wonder if it's going to start to turn into a swing, right? Now one is going to feel better than even three, maybe. I mean, that may sound a little far-fetched, but I, they really just dug this thing up and changed so much. I think a lot of people are going to be very pleased with the physics updated and speed boost for the Mako. This is something that a lot of people in the comments of yesterday's video were writing about. And I totally get that because there's nothing worse than bad vehicle controls, especially when it's really important to the entire core of the game. But let's talk about the real hype here. The real hype here is the loading screens being cut down, right? How long, how long do you think if you added up all that time in your life, you spent staring at that elevator after all those Mass Effect playthroughs, all that time spent, how long do you truly, truly think that was? You know, we've lost a lot of our life to that load screen and now no more. A new generation will embrace 14 second elevators and it's gonna be beautiful. This comes from PC Gamer. The game's UI and various interfaces have been overhauled and combat and exploration brought in line with the sequel's improvements. Better aiming, squad controls, team AI, and camera positioning. On the last point, for example, you'd commonly take cover in the game and get a brief view of the interior of Shepard's skull. No more. That, that is just like, yes, thank you God so much. Oh my God, okay. I cannot emphasize enough. If you don't believe me, just go play. Go play for like five minutes. You really don't have to get deep in the game to see it. The aiming in Mass Effect 1 is horrendous. Anyone who defends it, I don't think they've ever played a third-person shooter before. It is horrendous. So to see that being upgraded, even if it's not amazing, even if it doesn't feel like something along the lines of the Division 2 or later Mass Effect games, that's fine. Just anything better than what is already there is good news for everyone. And I hope that you don't really have to experience it because it's sloppy, it's it's floaty. The article perfectly describes it, right? I said the ear, but yeah, the skull. Like you just get a very close up view of the side of Shepard's head. It, it just, it's very intrusive. Back to the visuals, differences across the whole trilogy include remastered character models and expanded universal character creator and the option to use Mass Effect 3's default 
female shepherd model throughout. There are noticeable improvements to Shepard's range of skin tones, hairstyles, and makeup options for a more diverse range of possibilities. Overall, Bioware says there are tens of thousands of updated textures, shaders, visual effects, and lighting changes. Now, the character creator is a bigger deal than I think a lot of people are giving it credit for. The reason for this is because you can import saves. So that character you build in one can go into two, into three, and now that's all in one package. So having the character creation options from three being one and having that fem shep option in one is awesome man especially now because we can take the default fem shep from the cover art and just boom pop it right over but bioware mentioned like tens of thousands of updated shaders textures and so on and so forth and i don't think that's hyperbole we'll get into why on a technical level that's the case so just stick with me here let's continue to research a little bit of history here work on the legendary edition began in early 2019 when a small team within bioware finally got the green light there's been tentative talks within the studio for half a decade to get a trilogy remaster off the ground some of which got further than others but it was the return of studio boss casey hudson a mass effect veteran who finally pushed the project into being where to start with such an enormous project bioware quickly decided against creating new content or adding anything back in previously left on the cutting room floor in order to preserve the experience people remember so that means no mass effect 3 ending changes for those who bought into some of my speculation the studio also also discussed with Epic Games the possibility of moving the entire trilogy onto Unreal Engine 4, though discarded the idea after realizing many of the game's systems would no longer be compatible. Casey Hudson's actually no longer with Bioware nowadays. He left alongside Mark Dara just a number of months ago. We had talked about that here on the channel, but it's good that he's one of the ones responsible for really putting this out into the universe. So thank you, Casey, for pushing for all of us Mass Effect fans. We do appreciate it. But yeah, just I thought this history was a little interesting, how much they really do have to push for a franchise that's truly proven itself, it's relevant, it's something people are excited about, it would sell like hotcakes, and they really still had to fight for it. Also, the idea of it being put on Unreal Engine 4 is quite interesting. I thought that would have been neat to see, but I think, obviously, to retain things and not turn it into a whole remake, they probably just wanted to do what made the most sense and didn't remove things that tons of people would like hey all right everybody this is the hard part this is the part where uh i just i need to i need to have a drink of freaking water gotta talk about mass effect 3 multiplayer this is bullshit man when asked about Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, here's what Bioware had to say. We looked at what it would take to do that. Mac Walters, project director, said, What we do with crossplay, what we do with people playing multiplayer now, how do we honor that, bring them in, bridge that gap? And of course, these aren't insurmountable challenges, but when you looked at the amount of effort it was going to take to do that, it would easily commensurate, if not greater than, an example of uplifting all of Mass Effect 1. And I think our project really was the single player experience. At some point, we just had to draw the line. There was a lot of, I love Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. Like I say, people are still playing to this day. But ultimately, I think the product, the overall Mass Effect Legendary Edition, is a better representation of the original trilogy because we're able to focus on those single player elements. What? Ever, dude, okay? Whatever. I don't want to hear it anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I don't care. I don't care. Let's just friggin' move on. Too much effort. Okay. So, how did Bioware actually manage to upgrade all of the visuals in this game? Like I mentioned earlier, tens of thousands of texture shaders. Kind of sounds like an exaggeration. Well, they used AI to do it, which makes a lot more sense than just a couple of people in a room doing it. So, here's an article from VentureBeat. We knew we wanted to increase the resolution on all the textures across the trilogy environment and character director Kevin Meek said during a roundtable with press. So that means that all the visual effects, the user interface, the environment art, the character art, every single texture we hit right away with two main changes. First, we increased the cap the engines place on the texture sizes, and secondly, we ran all the original uncompressed source art through an AI upres program along with some other custom batch tools. Not bad, technology's going places. We've talked about on the Ham Radio podcast as well, Defining Duke, uh, AI upscaling happening in graphics, so... We're starting to see a lot of that now, and I imagine there's other developers who are going to update their previous projects through similar methods because it probably saves a lot of time. Now, for all of you out there who want to talk about the Nintendo Switch, which was previously leaked to be happening, but just not right away, here's what Mac Walters had to say on that. They're not ruling out the Nintendo Switch down the road, perhaps when there's more powerful hardware, suggests Eurogamer, but the remaster project had got off the ground on PC and existing consoles, and it was Bioware's mission to get these working first. Per 
personally i'd love it he said but ultimately i think we had a pad set and it was like let's finish that then let's see sort of where we're at the switch has started to really adopt the whole cloud version of games we saw hitman 3 drop on cloud we saw control drop on cloud i'm personally not a believer that there's going to be a new switch a more powerful switch later on they're already selling out on Switches, and so I feel like Nintendo has no reason to do that. Animal Crossing sold over 30 million copies in one year. Clearly, their main games, the ones that generate them the most revenue, do not demand that. But really, it is about those third parties, and how much does that keep Nintendo's system relevant? So I guess we do have to consider that at the end of the day, but I just feel like they'll probably cloud version this, make it stream onto the Switch, and then call it a day. But we'll see in due time. So what about the future of Mass Effect, I ask? Will there be hints in the Legendary Edition, even the odd note left lying around pointing at a future plotline? No, is the short answer. Quote, I think it's easier for the future of the franchise to look back and take from that, end quote, concludes Walter. Then for us to try to set a course for something that needs time to ideate and flourish on its own. I respect this, you know, as much as I would love having a secret ending or something within there that teases what's to come in Mass Effect, and I'm surprised that Bioware actually had the willpower to restrain themselves. We're talking about the company that shows prototypes in all of their trailers, right? They showed Mass Effect, this new chapter, way too early. Dragon Age 4, last time we saw it, it was a prototype. Like, it's just, it's insane, man. So I'm surprised they had the willpower to restrain themselves in all honesty here, but I do think it's good for the game. I think it's good that they're not committing to something, they're not creating an expectation anywhere, Go quietly make the game, make it as amazing as possible, make it a true RPG, and then we'll see what it's all about. But yeah, I totally respect this vision, and I think it's the smart choice. Are you still with me here? Because we got one more, and then the video can wrap up. I want to show you all the collector's edition for Mass Effect Legendary Edition called the Legendary Cash. It comes with a replica helmet. It comes with a key art metal case. It comes with the acceptance letter for N7, Canis art print, a morality spinner pin, but guess what? It doesn't come with, uh, which I'm really struggling to understand here because it comes with the metal case, the steel book. Uh, it doesn't come with the game. I don't, am I forgetting something here? Like they want you to buy the $60 game physically and then they want you to buy Legendary Edition. So it's like a $200 package, it's not 150 like it says here. It's like a, it's a, a 220 with tax shipping, all that shit. So yeah, I kind of might cave and buy this but i'm a little annoyed that i'm gonna have to buy it not twice but i feel like the game should come with this that's just my opinion but that helmet that's uh that's very hard to resist anyway breathe that is our mass effect info blowout a lot of information a lot of mass effect videos coming as i'm sure there are plenty more details to be revealed game informer has said that they already are doing a cover reveal and tons of information exclusively throughout the next month or so which i'm sure will be great for me because when they did that for the outer worlds i remember there was an issue with game informer where you have to like wait a certain amount of time before you can cover stuff from their website so if i end up taking a couple of days until it's more publicly available just understand that is why that is the case but anyway with that ladies and gentlemen i leave it in your hands let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. Those links are indeed in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who allow large pieces of content like this. Appreciate each and every single one of you. Thank you for supporting me. And I'll talk with all of you soon. Stay sexy. Stay active. I love you all. Peace.